guys, welcome back to Laced Up Podcast. We got Trey Stewart with us today, basketball player at BYU. He's got a super cool story, uh, basketball player and a businessman. Yes, sir. Trey, give us a little intro on you, a little background. Oh, an intro. Shoot, I'm from American Fork, Utah. Everybody looks at me surprised when I say that I'm from Utah. Because you're black and from Utah? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a rare breed, but no, I grew up in Utah, uh, played a lot of sports in high school, but I uh, started like focusing on basketball like my sophomore year. Came to BYU. I've been here for two years, just kind of doing my thing. I love art. I'm a psychology major. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, you said you played other sports in high school? Yeah, I played football to my, like, sophomore year. What else did I? That was actually all it was in high school. But then I played, obviously, like, soccer, baseball, all the other ones growing up. All, all the stuff when you are a little kid, That's right? what you got to when you were a kid, ball, bro. The what did you play? Did you play everything? Oh, yeah, I probably went through an everything phase. Soccer phase when I was little. Okay. Then, you, then you go up to t-ball. You got to. And then you play basketball. Mm-hmm. And then once, like, my parents wouldn't let me start football till fifth grade. That's how I was. I started fifth. Yeah. So then I started playing tackle football. Well, I guess I went flag football, tackle football. And then it was really just, uh, and then track once I got into high school. But then it was just. I, I wish ne- I did track. Yeah, I never did the baseball phase. I yeah. tried a little my senior year. My, my boys were trying to get me to do it. But okay. I stuck with the main just <laughs> basketball, <laughs> football, track. I should have ended baseball sooner. I remember, like, <laughs> it was third grade, pitch is coming in a little high. I jump up in the air and swing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, not not a baseball player. And then soccer, I was fast. So, like, you can do whatever, like, when you're young and fast. Yep. And then everybody started getting good at the foot skills. And I was like, all right, you can have this game. I'm yeah. going to step out. That's funny. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, family. Tell us about your family. Oh, family. Got twin sisters who are 11. They're kind of evil. Are they funny? They're they're such troublemakers, bro. We love that though. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You asked my mom. My mom the other day. I came <laughs> home and she's like, "When you have kids, have all of them in a one time frame." Because me and my little sister are like eleven years apart. Oh wow! And she's like, "Just do them all at once." Because they have two. You have an older sister. Yeah, older sister is twenty four. Me and the twins that are eleven. Okay, so you two are right there, not too far apart, and then the little yeah. ones just come, just doing their thing. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. So does she stay at home with them, or what does she do? Yeah, my mom, she does a billing at my uncle's dermatology office, and then my dad, he was a basketball coach and trainer all growing up, but then now he's doing, like, academic advising at BYU. Yeah, I know what your dad does, because he comes and checks on my class <laughs> Bro, every day. Dude, he makes crazy. sure I'm in my Book of Mormon class every he, Tuesday, Thursday. Imagine, like, all like he knows everything about me before I even know it, which is kind of <laughs> creepy, because he is, like, engraven in all, like, the – BYU athletes, yeah. So any drama, anything that happens, people just tell like tell him, and it's weird. Yeah. He has this like weird like therapist vibe. Where yeah. People just want to tell him information. <laughs> so like I hung out with a girl one time, and then like that night he texts me and is like, "Who is this?" And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, how did you know?" Like I literally just got done hanging out with the girl, and yeah, he knew. He knows it all, huh? So he's like all knowing right now, which is terrifying to have your dad at that level. That's funny. I ran into him yesterday. I said, hey, Trey's coming on the pod tomorrow. He said, ask him about his relationship with his father. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was, it was funny. Because, like, he was a basketball trainer all growing up. But he stopped coaching me when I was probably, in like, third grade. Just because, like, I, you know, you're a little kid. You're kind of just yeah. doing your own thing. So he kind of, I respect how he did it, where he separated our relationship from basketball. So it was kind of like, if you want to get good at basketball and do your thing, like, you got to have that own drive. Like, he mm-hmm. wouldn't be the one to be like, Trey, let's go shoot. Trey, let's go work out. It would just be like, like, if you need me, I'm here for you. Like, yeah. If you want to talk, if you want to get stuff off your chest, like, I'm your guy. But I'm not going to try to live through you, which I always respected. Yeah, because you see a lot of times, I've seen it many times where, like you said, dad's living through the kid. Oh. And it's just, they're just button heads all growing up. 100%. It ruins their relationship. Exactly. That's cool. I respect how yeah. he did that. That's and really it's, awesome. It's funny because, like, now that I'm a, uh, I want to be a sports psychologist. Mm-hmm. So we've been doing a lot of studying. Like, I just wrote an essay on early specialization in sports. Mm-hmm. And, like, Utah's like the breeding ground for that because, like, there's specialists everywhere. Kids yeah. are lifting weights at, like, third grade, which is just absurd. Right. And I don't know. It just kind of turns that thing into a job. And then the kids just don't have any joy in the game. So I'm yeah. glad you, let, like, let me find my own joy. So are you pro. Multi-sport? Multi-sport, 100%, especially at a young age. Yeah. Like, you got to cross-train because there's, like, a lot of things that go wrong if you don't. Yeah. And, like, you're more susceptible to injury. 
lose love of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of like stumble, like or not stumble. So it's called attrition, where you just like yeah you don't progress anymore. Exactly. So I don't know. That's I definitely cool. think you should try to like not put all your eggs in one basket and just kind of be Swiss Army knife like yeah. the guy here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I remember when I was in like uh, ninth grade, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna focus on football. I'm not gonna play basketball. Yeah. My dad showed me an article that Urban Meyer mm-hmm. only recruited uh, multi sport athletes. For that reason. Yeah. There's so many benefits to it. 100%. Plus, I mean, when I got to college football, I remember the season ended. And I'm, you know, high school, I'd go from basketball to football to track. Like, it was just always on to the next thing. And that break was good for me. Mm-hmm. There was no break. It's like, you take a month off or three weeks off. Then we're back to lifting. And exactly. it's like, bro, I was like, at first, it almost burned me out. It's like, yeah. you really have to love it. But otherwise, yeah, you could burn out just yeah. doing it nonstop. Oh, yeah. It's a grind, bro, but it's good. So what led to you uh, singling out basketball? Fact that you're well, how tall are you? Six five, six four. Uh, I say I'm six two. I'm like six three because normally yeah. basketball players go like they gas themselves up like two yeah. inches, but I usually dro- I drop an inch. <laughs> Why is that? See, I was gassing you up going you six four, six <laughs> See, five. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm really like six three, but I say I'm six two just because you go on the scouting report and you're like, oh, that person's six two, so they're probably like six foot, mm-hmm. but then really I'm six three, so it kind of. Okay. You no, know, just a little thing. Element of surprise. Yeah, a little odd thing that I do. I don't know why. I like it. How tall are you? I'm six foot. You're six foot. Okay. Like I'm, I'm six foot though. Like my I'm, my myself will say like six one. Yeah. No, nah, I'm, I'm straight up six. I respect foot. that. Yeah. I respect that. I wish oh, I was six what, one. What were we saying before? Um. Oh, I asked you what's like. How do you sing oh, about singling out basketball? Um. I'm trying to think. Yeah, seven on seven football was lit. So I really played football and basketball from like my freshman year. Those are my last two sports, and <laughs> I remember. We played seven on seven. The summer was lit. Like I love seven on seven. Yeah, that's it was fun. awesome. Um, but then the year before, so in basketball, um, I rode the bench my whole ninth grade year. Where yeah. I played about like two minutes a game. You know, a coach would put me in for like a couple minutes to just guard someone and then pull me back out. Yep. Um, and it was miserable. I hated it. And I remember I just had like such strong dreams <laughs> to play play college basketball because I watched a video on college football hell week and I was like. You know, basketball sounds <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> so I just kind of focused on, or I kind of that summer, I dedicated myself. I was like, man, I really wanted to get a college scholarship. So I kind of like fully turned all my efforts to basketball. That's cool. And then the moment I quit football was the first time I put on a helmet after seven on seven. Yeah. And I put on that helmet and I was like, nah. Not for you, <laughs> nah. huh? I was like, I, I can do the normal stuff, but like, no, I don't know what it was. It just wasn't feeling it. So That's I was funny. Like, I, I need to like basketball is my sport. Yeah, I don't blame you though. That's oh. cool. There's times where I wish I would have played basketball. You know, what I'm saying? The, I should I should have <laughs> shot more hoops in the gym sometimes. <laughs> well, like drive by the field and see it like raining and y'all are out there practicing and I'm yeah. like, man, respect to y'all. Respect there's to y'all. some days. There's some days where I wish I would have put a little more time in my ball handling, but it is what it is. Yeah, there are, are times where I wish some like I could play football too, where I'm like, man. But, you know, grass is always green on the other side. That's always, right? Exactly. Uh, and then you, so when did you get offered by BYU? Um, <clears throat> I didn't get an offer in high school. I actually committed to go to UVU uh, with Mark, with Coach Pope. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so committed there. And, like, he signed, like, a six-year extension or something. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so I'm good. Like, I'm right. definitely going to go to UVU. And then, like, a month later, he changed to BYU, and I was, like, freaking out. Yeah. And like, he pulled me over with him. So oh, that's dope. Nice to, like, get all that figured out. So were you on your mission when that happened? This was, like, a month before I left or two okay. months or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So then before you left, you're like, now I'm going to BYU? Yeah. Was that dope? Were you excited for that? Yeah, I actually had beef with BYU. I wasn't a BYU fan. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Come around, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My dad worked there. He was the women's coach for 11 years, and, like, we had free tickets to all the football games, basketball games. Yeah. Didn't go. I think I went to a couple football games, but I don't think I've ever been to a single basketball game. I've yeah. maybe been to, like, one or two, but I don't remember ever watching anything. Right. Like, I just, I don't know. I wasn't a BYU fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it came around, I guess. What about you? Why weren't you? Uh, I was I was mad they wouldn't offer me in high school. That was part of it, I guess. I was too. like, what the heck? I'm like, yeah. That, uh, there was, yeah. I was just mad they yeah. wouldn't offer me, really. Because I was, was like, the, I would have gone there. Who was I the coach at the time? Was this, It was Kalani. It was Kalani still? Okay. Yeah. And so I thought for sure I was like one of the top dudes in the state, athletic yeah. quarterback. And I kind of knew most people were looking at me as a safety, which I was cool with. Yeah. So I was expecting them. But, like, they just, I don't know, the staff at the time – Whoever's the DB coach at the time wasn't a fan, so yeah. 
I don't know, but we won't hold it against him. We're good now. No, I had the same thing where it was Rose was the coach at the time. Yeah. And, yeah, they just didn't recruit me. I was like, all right. That's how it goes sometimes, right? Yeah, that's the way the road. Yeah, be with your guy. Um, so then you go on your mission, and that was interesting, right? Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. That you had was some a, adversity there. Yeah, it was a weird path, but it was cool. I went to Leeds, England. I was there for nine months. England is a funny place. Is it? They do not talk like Harry Potter where I served. I was disappointed. <laughs> it's very like, they'd be like, wait, man, put the wood in the toil. Me and my mates, we go into the pub for a pint. And it's yeah. just like, <laughs> we're like Scottish, Irish, That's English funny. mixture. I didn't know that. Yeah. Have you ever seen, you've probably seen dating shows. What's it called? There's one. Love Island. Love Island, yeah. Oh, uh, she watches it all yeah. the time. And yeah. like all the girls are from like Newcastle and everything. Thing, yeah exactly how they talk really he is crazy that's funny bro yeah so that was fun bro like it was just a good experience to be in a foreign country there for nine months and then covid happened and i have asthma and they sent me home mm-hmm. but they didn't send like our whole mission home they just sent the people who are like at risk yeah but i was like come on bro like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good like i'm a healthy person like it's asthma <laughs> yeah so they yeah they sent me home for asthma i was home for four and then uh, I got reassigned to so Washington Kennewick mission and then finished out my mission there. And, yeah, <laughs> we know how that went with me. me yeah. Serving with your brother. Yeah, that was cool. You trained my brother. You need to tell me about the wedding. Yeah, so my wedding. So also your brother-in-law, for those who don't know, his brother-in-law was my first and last companion on my mission. We were in the MTC together, and we end our mission together. But at my wedding, he comes, and he brings this girl and my mom was like, oh, she's the cutest girl. Like, if Jeff doesn't, like, marry or whatever, I've got to set her up with Kale. There's all this <laughs> stuff. And then turns out, um, then Kale goes on his mission, like, a month later. And that girl's little brother is you, and you're his trainer. Yeah. So it was, like, so many, like, weird random so ties. Many weird, like, connections. Yeah. And I remember, <laughs> this is funny. I remember when I first came home from my mission, uh, Jeff FaceTimed you. Yeah. And on the mission, you listen to, like, that mission music. Yeah. This was my second day home. And you know who Lauren Daigle is? Yeah, big <laughs> Lauren Daigle guy. <laughs> I was doing push-ups, and I was just listening to Lauren Daigle because, like, that's all I knew. Like, yeah. that's all I knew. And I remember Jeff calls me, like, yo, crew, look at this idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, come on, bro, you'll get normal soon. <laughs> yeah, this guy's in his room. Doing push-ups, probably still, like, fully clothed, had his shirt on and everything. Like exactly. Doing push-ups of Lauren Daigle, <laughs> and, and Jeff FaceTimes me, and I'm just roasting this guy over FaceTime. That was Bro, funny. The adjustment back, did it take Did it take you that long to adjust back? It did. She says it didn't. I felt like it did. Like, I agree. I remember when we were watching, <laughs> I would, like, this is weird, I would, like, cry randomly. Because I would, like, I missed, like, the feeling of being a missionary, which uh, is weird. You would never expect that from me. No, you don't. And then, like, also, like, certain things, I really had a hard time with, uh, like, movies and, like, just any media. Like, yeah. music, all that stuff was really hard for me. And also, TikTok wasn't a thing before I left on my mission. I come home from a mission, now there's TikTok, and you know how TikTok is with, like, yeah. the girls on TikTok. I was like, what is, uh, like, this is an evil place. I'm like, we're, place, we're, it's crazy. Like, we're in trouble, we're, it's man. Like, he's coming was, soon. He's yeah. got to be coming soon. Exactly. I was like, because when I left, TikTok was like, the thing where like girl like just girls would go on yeah and just like you know it was just not a good place to right, find right. anything that's like uplifting. You're not but getting no like, wholesome content there. No, you're not. So then like everybody thought it was weird before I left, and then when I came home, everybody was addicted to it, and it was like yeah. a new Instagram, and I was like, right. So I've been, I'm glad that like I had that experience, like step away from that and then come back, so that I haven't gotten it. Yeah, because I'm like no, like yeah, you see how people act and like my little sisters. Part of the reason why my little sisters are so crazy is because of TikTok and YouTube. Yeah. They, like, talk like they're influencers. They talk yeah. like they have a YouTube <laughs> channel. We'll sign off. Thanks for watching. I'm like, bro, come on now. That is funny. Oh, that's crazy. So it was a rough adjustment coming home. Yeah, it was a rough adjustment for me socially, which was yeah. the weirdest thing. Where like, Because I'm not a very social person. Like, in high school, I kind of just stayed to myself. My senior year, I kind of branched out a little bit more. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess a good way to put it is, like, growing up, I was always kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I wouldn't order my own food at a restaurant or nothing. Oh, really? Yeah. It was odd. I don't know. I was just very shy. And then my senior year, uh, administrator came up to me and was like, I won't, like, I was obviously, like, I'd still talk to people. Like, I was just kind of social. But he's like, I challenge you to learn a name of someone every day. So I did that. And that was, like, the most powerful high school experience for me because I'd just be in the lunch line. 
Yeah. And you just tap the dude on the back. Hey, bro, what's your name? And then, like, just start talking. Where are you from? All that stuff. Um, and I did that. And then slowly I started to know more and more people. So by the end of the year, you're walking down the hall and you're like, oh, what up, God? What up, this? You know yeah. everybody's name. That's and it just cool. created, like, a cool community. But then beyond that, it changed me as a person to prepare me to go on my mission. Right. So then, like, on my mission, it was easier to go out and make those under uncomfortable contacts with people. Yeah. But then when I came home, it was like I was exhausted from that. Yeah. And then I just, like, stayed in my bubble. And I really? struggled. Like, when I was around people, it stressed me out. A lot of people, like, in a room would just give me, like, social anxiety. Really? And, like, I still have that pretty bad, but it's it's just an odd thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, is that kind of what inspired your, like, your default happiness stuff? Yeah, yeah. So talk a little about that. This is one of his shirts, Default Happiness, and I got his wristbands on. Yes, sir. Um, Like, tell us about how you come up with that and... and yeah. Where that came from. So, like, just with me being in my own bubble in high school a lot of the times, like, I just like to be alone. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a good thing because it allows me to, like, get a lot of work done, like, be right. in the gym. But then it also kind of, like, makes me alone and feel that, like, dark depression and stuff. Right. So, like, in high school, I had, like, depressive moments and, like, those episodes that would just come and go. And, yeah, I just hated the way it made me feel. And then I came back from my mission and I started feeling those things again. And then I read this book called Solve for Happy, mm -hmm. and it was like the book changed me. And it came up, it has this idea in it called Default Happiness, which is like creating a state where you can generate your own happiness, where your default state is happiness. And then when you go out in the world, it's like you don't need to have a good day. You don't need to receive all these things. You don't need your job to go well. You don't need anything else to go well because you've already generated that happiness inside of you. So that just comes from, like, in the morning, waking up, meditating, you know, getting workouts in, doing stuff like self-care stuff. Yeah. And then regardless of what happens in your life, you're able to kind of not always be happy, but just, like, have that inner peace. And right. Yeah. And what's that like? So coming from someone, like, I've never really experienced that. And so it's, like, hard for me. Like, when I hear depression, it's like, yeah, I get sad sometimes. But I've yeah. never experienced that kind of, like, is it, like, an overwhelming feeling? Or what is it like when you have those episodes? Yeah. It's just, like, this weird darkness that's so hard to explain, mm -hmm. but it just, like, comes on you, and you just feel low. And I remember I was the same way, like, when people, like, before it happened, when people would first tell me about it, I was like, oh, like, you just got to be mentally tough. And, like, right. you tough it, it out. Right. And, like, you can't describe it, and, like, it doesn't make any sense to other people. Like, I have the opposite of anxiety, too. So, like, when people talk about anxiety, I'm like, I don't feel that. Yeah. So, like, it's kind of funny where I'm trying to – figure out like to sympathize with other people's situations. Uh, but yeah, depression for me is just like, I don't know, you just feel so dark and alone and hopeless. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the hopelessness is the main thing that just kind of like really eats at you. So then right. that's why I want to kind of make this brand to like make sure people know that like, Hey, like this happens to everybody. Cause right. when I, it first happened to me, I thought I was the only one. I was like, yo, something's wrong with me. I'm broken. Right. And like I went to therapy and everything. I was like, yo, something's messed up. And they're like, Oh no, this is like a common thing. And okay. I actually, like, I got a concussion, and post-concussion depression is, like, a huge thing that actually happens. Oh, really? Which I didn't know about. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So yeah. it was, like, an odd thing. So I've been, like, doing a bunch of research on it just because, like, I feel like it needs to be talked about and educated more. Yeah. Because I got that, and then, like, my th like after I got that concussion, I didn't put two and two together, but my whole thought process was just totally different. Yeah. So it was just an odd thing. So I did feel like I was broken. But then, like, going to therapy and, like, talking to people made me realize, like, oh, no, like, this is normal. Like, this is part of life and growing. And, like, this is, like, my trial. And I want other people to know that, like, you know, we, the other people are going through it. Right. And, like, we can still continue. We can still have happiness through these tough situations. That's awesome. Yeah. So have you since then uh, developed, like, practices for when you do have those moments that you yeah. can, like, kind of fall back on or, like, a mm. yeah? Yeah, 100%. And it's kind of like it comes, like, for me. It's different for everyone, obviously, but I found that, like, a daily routine is, like, crucial to, like, being happy. Like, if I wake up in the morning, you know, read my scriptures, say my prayers, kind of get my mind right, set goals, make sure I'm driven for the day. Because, like, for me personally, when I feel productive, that's when I feel happy. Yeah. Like, when I feel like I'm accomplishing something and getting somewhere. I, th I think that's for a lot. It's almost yeah. like you're staying ahead of the game yeah. to avoid, it's almost like premedication. Yeah, 100%. Right? Don't wait for you to fall back to, it's like, yeah. Um, I think... That's the key right there, right? When people don't feel like they have, they aren't productive or they have a purpose, yeah. I think that's when they start feeling that that hopelessness, right? Mm -hmm. So, no, I think that's super cool. And you also, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying that purpose is a good point. Like yeah. When you don't feel like you have purpose, that's like a painful thing because you just feel like you're just chilling. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Well, what am I doing? Yeah. 
How did how is your I see your shirt that new one? Oh, this yeah. is a new one, right? Yeah. I believe in Christ. Yes, sir. The devil's my op. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I think for people who I mean, whether you remember the church or not, having a, a faith in like or a belief in something more, yeah. I think that helps a lot with that hopelessness. Oh, totally. And like again, that's why like scriptures and prayer is so important to me. And then again, it's like something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how people like obviously if you're atheist, like and that works for you, like that's awesome. And like my roommate, he's Muslim. And he's the most faithful, devout, happy dude I've ever met in my life. They pray a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's crazy how much dedication it is. Yes. And I don't know. That's kind of one thing that like really surprised me on my mission. I remember I'd go and like try to convince these people. I'm like, oh, these people are wrong. Yeah. But then I'm like, like this light bulb clicked in my head where it's like, no, like this works for them. And Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I have this message of the gospel and it is important. I do believe that can help them. But if they're happy in the realm that they're living in, right. obviously there can be more happiness. But, like, if you're happy in the realm you're living in and you found something that you can, like, drag you through hard times, keep up with that, bro. Like, 100%. just do your thing. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. And another part to your brand, don't you do some sort of, like, give back? Like, yeah. Yeah. Will you explain that? Yeah. So that's been, like, I've been grateful for the whole NIL thing. Yeah. Because before I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, now I can. And... And also being, like, an athlete, you're given a lot of resources. And I don't know, like, I haven't, I don't really need the money, like, to pay for rent or anything. Like, my scholarship pays for that. So all the proceeds that I earn from my clothing, uh, I just, like, team up with different charities. Like, I teamed up with Jaron this Mm -hmm. past year. And we did, like, a whole anti-bullying fundraiser piece. And, like, all the money that's raised from that piece goes towards starting his foundation. And then the one I just worked with was Rain Humanitarian, where they go down to the DR and they give toys out to kids. I saw that on your and page. Yeah, that was, like, the most rewarding thing for me to see, like, you know, I'll be, like, staying up to, like, 1, 2 in the morning, fulfilling orders and doing all this stuff. Um, and I don't take any of the money, but, like, just seeing that those kids got these toys for Christmas, just yeah. really, like, I don't know. It just made, like, it just made me feel so good and it made me feel so happy for them that, like, you know, and then like the whole humanitarian group that went down and like gave those toys, like shout out to them. Like, I don't know. It's just such a cool and powerful thing. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. And you don't take a cent. No, I have yet to take a dollar. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. You. So, um, you, uh, partnered with Jaron, you did this thing and you said it was a DR. Yeah. And it was just toys. They were just getting toys for Christmas. Yeah, they and got all like, you know, angel wings, yeah. sets. They, the, the, the Probably the coolest thing was they got a bunch of baseball gear. Oh, yeah? And they played a whole baseball game. No way. So it was just cool to see, like, all these kids going out having fun. So, yeah. That's so cool. I think it's so cool what you're doing because not only does it help, like, your 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 brand serves so many people. Yeah. And the fulfillment you receive from that, obviously, it's like that's that's more than the money you would receive, right? Yeah. And so I think that's awesome. It's, it uh, speaks volumes towards you as a person and, and, and what you believe in. Thank you. you obviously... You're in like the clothing, like I mean, you you sell clothing, but yeah. like, are you you're pretty like uh, clothing shoes, like you're into that stuff, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. What's uh, how'd you get into all that? Like fashion? Yeah, I don't know. I've always been like a art kid. When like growing up, I remember <laughs> I'd take like a car, or a toaster apart. Yeah, and like I'd like turn it into some. Weird, my mom would call them creations. Yeah, and I'd like hot glue a bunch of like stuff together and make like a robot looking thing yeah so i've always kind of liked art but then like this has been a way like as i've evolved like i've started to like shoes more and then i was like you know starting to try to dress a little bit nicer and then that kind of rc side kind of came into it where it's like oh i can like do like the whole art thing on like the stuff that i wear Mm -hmm. so then that kind of incorporated me like doing the clothes because i only did shoes at first um so, yeah, that just kind of, like, it just kind of was a domino effect, and then, yeah, you know, deep in it. <laughs> I cool. love clothes now. <laughs> uh, you do, uh, don't you like custom shoes? Yeah, yeah. So, I, like, yeah, I started, because the whole thing was uh, trigger words. Oh, this is a good question for you. Okay. What's kind of, like, a phrase that you say to yourself, or, like, a personal mantra that you have in your sport? Uh, that's a really good question. I think my biggest thing is like kind of depends on what I'm focusing on at the time, yeah. but I'm big in like self-talk. Yeah. That's huge to me. Mm-hmm. So like I'm always the best mm-hmm. in my mind, right? I'm not going to treat other like there's like treat others like they're less than me, but in my mind, I'm always the best. Yeah. I should be the starter. I should be like, I'm just always telling myself I'm the best. Yeah. Um, 
and I don't let myself tell myself otherwise. Mm -hmm. Don't let me tell myself otherwise. Just because I believe in like more powerful than positive talk is negative talk. So it's like maybe maybe you don't believe in like positive self talk, but there's one thing that's for sure proven true, and that's negative self talk. Yeah. So one of my I guess oh here I just don't uh, a quote I live by is don't say stupid stuff out loud. So don't say negative <laughs> don't I say like negative that. things out loud. Yeah. And I believe as long as I'm not saying negative, like I'll catch myself sometimes. I'll be like negative or whatever. Had a bad day at practice. It's like no. So. Yeah. That's helped me a lot. Yeah, 100%. So, like, that's kind of, like, one of the tools that I use personally, like, in a sport. Like, you were talking earlier about, like, things, like, little different, like, practices I have that, like, keep me happy. Yeah. In terms of, like, my sport, trigger words is a huge thing for me. Yeah. Where a trigger word is, like, that phrase where you're, like, I'm the best. And it kind of, yeah. like, snaps your mind back into the, like, reality. Mm -hmm. And, like, one of mine is Udalali. Have you seen the cartoon Robin Hood? Yeah. The old one? Yeah. Wait, wait. The, the old one. Old one. Yeah, I watched the it. The Fox. <laughs> I've been watching it like a bunch. I don't know why. It's a good one to fall asleep to, all right? Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I've been watching it like last week. Yeah. I was watching it. Okay, that's dope. But yeah, in high school, I'd always write Oodalali on my shoes because it would just remind me like, regardless of the situation, like, make it work and yeah. like, do it with a smile because like, mm -hmm. you look at Robin Hood and Lil John, like, they just have fun. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, funny enough, on my mission, I actually served in Nottingham, which is where that took place. So that oh, was really? kind of a cool thing for me. Um, but, yeah, so trigger words, those little things just, like, snap my mind back into it. And, like, weekly, I'll change my trigger words. Um, so I started putting those on my shoes because I, like, you know, I like the art. I like things to look clean rather yeah. than just, like, scribbling Sharpie on it. Right. So I started to do that, and then I realized I could do other stuff. So I started putting, like, cartoon characters on or, like, different things, different pictures um, and then, yeah, right now I'm actually starting, a uh, this, like I've been doing shoe custom workshops where like yeah. people will bring their shoes. I saw one of yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. They're entertaining. We're like, people will bring their shoes. We sit down, we have all the materials like paint, stencils, anything you can think of, laces, all laid, all laid out. And then we have like a piece of paper where people can design their own shoes and like figure out what materials they want to use and everything. And then they just customize their shoes and we help them. So I don't know. That's been a really cool thing. I really enjoyed doing that with the shoes. That's super dope. Yeah. So you uh, obviously keep the main thing, the main thing, right? Which I assume for you right now is basketball. Yeah. But you have this business side of you, mm. right? Would you like, is that come more from your artistic motivation or is it more from like you enjoy business? Yeah. So this is actually an interesting conversation I was having the other day with someone <laughs> Where there's two, there's like the business person and then there's the artist. Yeah. And I'd say I'm like, like on the spectrum right here of like this being the business person, this being the artist, I'm way more on the artist side. Yeah. Cause like the artist is just like going to grind it out. Just like, yeah. you know, you look at all those old artists just sitting in a room for like all day, just painting. Right. And you have the businessman who sees an opportunity to make financial gain and they want to do like everything they can to like make it bigger, industrialize it. But then mm -hmm. the problem is, is that takes away from like the one-on-one -on -one purity of the artist. Right. So I was having this, uh, when we were starting our shoe thing, we had this conversation and this business <clears> dude <throat> came and then there's this dude who paints murals and they were both talking to each other about like our whole thing. And it yeah. was just so funny to hear them talk. Cause like just totally contradicting. And I had to step out of the conversation cause I was like, I'm just going to let these two <laughs> go at it. Cause they were like both sides of the spectrum, just yeah. battling and just going at it. Cause you know, there's just such different mindsets towards those things. So that was entertaining to see. But I'd definitely say I'm more on the art side. I'm not. I don't really enjoy the business side of things. That's cool. See, I'm I'm more on the business side of things. Yeah. And my brother, he's more on like, he's he's like the perfect medium. Mm -hmm. Very business minded, but also like he enjoys art. Like he's a hair cutter, which <laughs> does chancho fades. Chancho fades. <laughs> yes, sir. Go get a cut. <laughs> if you haven't hit him up, you need to. He, uh, he's been cut up some of the boys on the team when he's in town. Oh, man, he did. I wish he would have done it for me on a mission, bro. Yeah, what the heck? He was slacking. Uh, he's uh, legit now. He's got his whole I travel pack. Nice clippers and nice everything. Clippers, all that. You're, order, you're, uh, aren't you sponsored by uh, Boneyard? Boneyard, yeah. See, that's messed up, man. I know. I just, <laughs> he should have hit me sooner, bro. <laughs> I'll just play it. Boneyard does a good job. I'd go to them when I was on Logan. Yeah, so. they're good people. Um, I, I do want to ask you this. Do you have a favorite pair of shoes? Favorite pair of shoes, like ones that I've done, or just like a favorite pair in general. Both, like you're, yeah. Um, ooh, probably I made a Black History Month shoe uh, yeah. that I played uh, most of my. It was funny. Most of my good games this year, there weren't that many, but there were <laughs> most, the most of my good games that I played. I was wearing that shoe. Yeah, but it's a uh, has like the Black History fist on the toe. Yeah. 
And then it says Traybo, which is kind of like a bite off of Little Black Sambo, which was like this old cartoon. Okay. Uh, and then it has my six like favorite black leaders, female, male, um, that I like look up to the most. And then under it, it has one word that represents them. So like, well, like Jackie Robinson, he just says forty two. Yeah. Uh, Martin Luther King says I dream. Uh, That's I'm cool. Trying to think of what other ones there are. Obama says like represent. Cause yeah. I remember when I was a kid, Obama got elected. I was like. Let's go, baby. There you go. Let's go. That's Somebody crazy. who looks like me. I was like, it's <laughs> awesome to see. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, you said most of your good games were in those shoes. Are you superstitious at all? Oh, 100%. You are? I bring two shoes. Like, in high school, I'd always bring two shoes to every game. Yeah. I still do that. Because, like, if you play bad at halftime, there's no there's no more buckets left in the shoes. You got to switch them. Yeah. You hey. You got to charge them up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I was uh, my best game ever in high school. I had to switch my shoes at halftime. I made, I made one of the JV dudes. I was like, who's got 11s? And so I was like. Just yeah. random shoes? I'm like, random I need please. those. I was like, these aren't working. So <laughs> <laughs> I made him switch me. I'm glad I'm not alone in that, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Are you, what about like accessories and anything? Are you superstitious about that? Uh, some of them. Yeah. And at times. Okay. It depends if I get into a groove. If I get into a groove with like wearing a certain thing and I'm like Keep playing it. well, don't switch it up. Exactly. But, like, last year when I didn't play too much, I was just, you know, whatever yeah. looked dope that day. Yeah. But, no, yeah, there's certain things where I, I'm I'm superstitious about this yeah. stuff. And more than that even is, like, my routines leading up to, to games and practice and all that stuff. Yeah. So That's why my hair thing was annoying me because I kept having to switch my hair. Yeah. But I was, like, like I, it wasn't getting my comfortable spot. I was, like, yeah. it was annoying. Hey, you don't feel good. You don't play good. Exactly. It's a, it goes hand in hand, bro. You got to look good. If you look good, you're going to be hooping. Hundred percent. And what about your favorite shoes? Like that are just raw shoes. Um, I like these that I made because I like the off white Jordan twos. Yeah. But I did. I wish they would have put the dunk laces on them. So then I did that. Um, and then I got these for like sixty bucks on Facebook Marketplace. You made those? Yeah. You put the little eyelets in little them. Little eyelets and like you know drill the hole. <laughs> Dude, but that's dope. Thank you, bro. Strong. Yeah, you get oh, a little. Gotta get them up, up there. Gotta get them up. Coffee dip the laces and everything. Oh no way! But like nobody likes the Jordan twos either. Like they're, I can't name. They're anybody. slept on. Yeah, so no one know. wears those. Yeah. What's been uh, What's been your favorite college basketball experience? Oh shoot. Um. There's a lot of like good memories just with your teammates, but I'm trying to think of one specific one. Oh, this was <laughs> so we went to we had a tournament in the Bahamas this year and we lost our first two games, which sucked. Yeah. And like when you lose and you're just chilling in a hotel room all day, like everyone's like, Oh, you're in the Bahamas, that's so sick. It's like, no, like it's a We lost trip. in the Bahamas. Yeah, we lost in the Bahamas. <laughs> so it's a business trip. So then we play the third day and we're down by twenty three at halftime. Oh yeah. Who who are you playing? Dayton. Okay. And it's not looking good. You know, <laughs> everybody was in their own thing. Like, a lot of stuff happened. But we came back down mm-hmm. 23 and won the game. So then that makes the whole trip good. Right. Like, oh, yeah. winning solves everything in college. Like, if you lose, the coaches are pissed. Like, there's just this weird energy around that just follows. Oh, yeah. But we won. So then they, like, let us have that night because this is what we were going home the next day. So they had a water park attached to the hotel. Yeah. But the water park closes at 6, and our game was at 7, so it's been closed forever. So it's like, yeah. what, 10.30 right now? Yeah. And Kansas and Tennessee were playing, but so nobody was, like, around. <laughs> so yeah. we went to the water park, and we went down, like, the slides and everything. And yeah. it was, like, there was, like, 10 of us, and it was just so fun. Like, the slide goes under this, like, shark tank. Yeah. So, like, the water wasn't off all the way. So we're all going down, and then it just stops, and we're in the middle of this shark tank. Obviously, like, there's glass and everything. Yeah, yeah. But we have to, like, hunch and crawl through. So that was just, like, <laughs> I don't know, just one of those funny memories that you just look back on. And it was like, man, that was just such a good time. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, what you said was true, though. When, uh, when you're winning, everything's going good. Oh, a lot of stuff gets sl- uh, swept under the rug when you're winning. Uh, and people don't understand. Like, oh. the media, everybody can say what they want until you're, like, in it and experiencing it. Do uh, do they watch a lot of film? Like, do you guys watch film? Oh, crazy amounts, yeah. So do they film every practice, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, and then do you watch it every day, too? Yeah. Oh, as a team? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's funny, like, because <laughs> football, I always see football players watching film. Always. It's, it, like, such a huge part of the game. Yeah. And I, I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people don't think basketball watch film, but, like, like right. Yeah. 
you like practice, then you go upstairs and you watch the practice you just had. Yeah. And the next morning you come, you watch a little bit more of that practice. Yep. And then you watch film on the other team and everything. Like, yeah. So it's good. Uh, do you, so like, I remember in high school, it was like, you'd go to film, you'd have your game Friday, Saturday, you'd have film. And like, you know, that play that's coming up <laughs> that you're like, you're just hoping you're just like, I hope it doesn't see what happened or whatever. You're just like, you're just crunching in your seat. Just like knowing it's going to come. <laughs> uh, and then I got to college and now you have that every day. Oh, it's like, you don't just have to deal with that once a week. You know uh-huh. that every day now. <laughs> um, so nothing's worse than when like, you know, that happened and yeah. you guys lost or whatever. Nothing is hidden on film. Yeah. Nothing is hidden on film. You're just sitting there just hoping coach doesn't say nothing. And of course they always do. And yeah. Well, it's like your low light that you had. And I have a, I have a good one. I'll tell mine. And then you think of yours. Oh, uh, like being caught on film. Yeah. All right. Tell you. So mine was, uh, actually I'll give you two. <laughs> You know what the wind bike is? The assault bike? Yeah. It's like the hardest conditioning thing we do. We do it where we have to get it above like a cadence of 90. Yeah. You do it for 30 seconds. That'll you suck. do that like eight times. Yeah. And like the first time you do it, I remember Foos on our team. He's from Mali. Yeah. And he has this like thick French accent. And he gets off the bike. He's like, I can taste my blood. I can taste my blood. He's like everything, like he was freaking out. And like I did it the first time. And then we like I couldn't move my legs. And we go out on the court. And our manager has the ball, and we're just doing this drill where we're supposed to just, like, fake defense. Mm -hmm. So the manager catches the ball, and he just takes a jab step. So I go, and I plant, but my leg just disappears, and I barrel roll. Oh, yeah. Just from a manager jab. Manager broke your ankles, (laughs) huh? Yeah, that's Um, not good. You don't want that one down. You don't want that one. But the worst one was I got blocked by one of our managers. Yeah. And then the next day, our whole team's gathered around, and coach is like, all right, let's watch this tape. So he plays that clip. They come down, they have a laminated piece of paper with the manager's handprint on it. The handprint signed, and in the bottom right, there's a QR code, and you scan the QR code, it takes you to the video of me getting no blocked way. by the manager. Oh, that is wild. <laughs> they got that's, me. That's funny, oh, actually, that I'm not going to lie. No, that, that I haven't good. had any that bad. Yeah. I just remember I got hawked down one time. Actually, no. no. It wasn't necessarily a bad play, but the most embarrassing thing ever was I just got, like... I was at this camp and like my mom took me. It was like, I was actually at a Nevada camp. And so luckily it wasn't like with the team or anything. Yeah. My mom's recording, like just, you know, help me out. Mom and tape. so they had me playing uh safety, which I never did in high school. And so I'd only play quarterback, hmm. but I'd go to camps and they'd want to see me at safety. And it's like, okay, but was it just cause you're like athleticism? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so I'm like, I'm cool playing safety, but you gotta understand I have no training. Yeah. This little, just this quick, like five six black kid just as fast as he'd be like a mini Tyree kill <laughs> goes up yeah 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 and I boom hit the ground all fours I've oh. never been never been more embarrassed you hit the ground on all fours it's bad mom got it on video too yeah I don't I don't she might have deleted it before right, we got back, but I remember that was like that's my all time most embarrassing moment <laughs> all right well now I got to hear your best like college football experience my best college football experience yeah. uh someone asked me this the other day what did I say I I would say um I mean getting an interception always feels good. Mm-hmm. So, um, but one of the coolest things, kind of similar to yours, it wasn't necessarily in a game, but we run out at Utah State and the lights go off. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is dope. They're like, I thought they were doing it on purpose, right? Because oh. it was like for, uh, like, right before the kickoff, right? The music's playing. Everybody's, like, bouncing all that stuff. Packed stadium. It was, it was when 2021, when we won the Mountain West, best year Utah State ever had. Lights shut off. And I'm like, oh, it's crazy. Everybody turns their flashlight on, like, the stadium's lit up just by people's flashlight. Like, it's a concert. Like, this is crazy. I'm, like, looking around. I was like, this is dope. But then it was just because the power went off. Oh, and it was, yeah. <laughs> so we're, yeah, like, we're like, this is cool. And then, like, two minutes go by. We're like, okay, I can turn the lights guys, back let's on. Let's like, get it up. Let's get it back up. Yeah. So, but that was awesome. That was a really cool experience. And I'm like, it's one of those moments where you just, like, well, I always remember. It's like, you can't get this. I remember sitting there. I'm like, you yeah. can't get this anywhere it's else. just the feeling, bro. Yeah. Just, like, that environment. Oh. Yeah. And, and just, I love being in big stadiums. Yeah. I know a lot of people have, like, anxiety about that. Um, but that's one of my favorite things about, yeah. uh, like, football. Like, I love I having like, the – What's a small stadium? Like, I feel like a small stadium would be weird to play in. Yeah, like, uh, San Jose. We went to San Jose. They were, like, constructing half the stadium. Oh. And so it was, like, we only had fans on one side of us. It was, like, high school. Like, there was – or yeah. Little League. There was no one behind us. Yeah. It was weird. That is odd. So, um, and then, like, Air Force. Or you got the Air Force base. But those guys are rowdy. Yeah. That was actually kind of crazy. But. What's the craziest fan environment you've been? Because honestly, a lot of people would say Utah State has like, because like BYU has like a large amount of fans, like yeah. the Rock's crazy, but like 
Utah State's fans were brutal. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Utah State, they actually, they'll pack that thing, basketball and football, because, like, yeah. there's nothing else to do in Logan. Their so, basketball games are crazy, too. Yeah, and their basketball, like, stadium is right on top of you. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. that I didn't play anywhere too crazy. The, I don't know if it was New Mexico State or I think it was Air Force. Yeah. Those dudes were brutal. Like, I, I don't really, like, you can say whatever to me. It doesn't really bother yeah. me. But some of the dudes on the sideline were, like, getting into it with the guys. I'm <laughs> like, bro, you just came off, like, a freaking 10-play drive. Why are you not just, like, tired gas getting water? They're, like, yelling at the people behind them. I'm like, that's crazy. Uh, oh, they were throwing cheese at us. Cheese? Cheese. So, like, craft <laughs> singles. They're they were chucking them. Open them up and throw them at us. And Interesting. I was like, it was weird. Yeah, don't know where the cheese came from or why, but someone just has some old probably cheese came in their from sandwiches. The military base it, yeah, it's like this out. was their sack lunch yesterday. They all saved it. I don't know. <laughs> um, Did I get that memo? Yeah, no. Cheese. So uh, you have you talked a little about your relationship with your your father. Mm. Um, who would you say your like? Who's your inspiration? My inspiration. Um. Or maybe like a mentor or a hero or someone that you've looked up to. Like I could say my mom. Honestly, my mom is like my best friend. And like a lot of the characteristics and the way I conduct myself is just because the relationship I have with my mom. That's super cool. And I remember growing up, my sister would have dance class in Orem. Yeah. And we lived in American Fork, which is like 30 minutes away. Yeah. So like it didn't make any sense for us to like go back and forth. Uh, so we just, me and my mom would stay up there while my sister had dance and we'd have like an hour and a half to just hang out. Yeah. So I remember just that relationship just really like build who I am today. And like my, my relationship with my dad obviously like created so much foundation for me. Uh, but just who my mom is and like her independence, um, her love that she shows, just all those certain things. Like I just love my mom to death and I owe so much to her. So like that's like my main inspiration, I'd say. And then, obviously, like, I just take bits and pieces from everywhere else. Yeah. Like, obviously, I could say Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lord and Savior, best example you could follow. Right. Uh, but there's just so many, like, great people out in the world that I just love to, like, listen to and, like, take little bits and pieces from them. That's awesome. Mom's, uh, <clears throat> mom has something special to them. There's, yeah. you can't really describe it. Moms no, have a way, of, a way of loving that you just, no one else can do. I don't care. It's just, no. Moms have a way of touching totally the heartstrings. You a mama's boy or pop? Um... Uh, I'm pretty balanced, but I would say, like, I've always been, uh, like, a mama's boy yeah. a little bit. I've always been really tight with her. Yeah. And uh, always, I've never been, like, a yeller or, like, a backlasher. So yeah. I've never, like, argued with them. And everybody's like, thinks it's weird. They're, like, especially when I was in, like, high school and stuff. So, like, you like, why don't you, like, fight with your parents or anything? I'm like, I'm, uh, first off, I know I'm not going to win that battle. No, <laughs> I'm never winning that we'll battle. Lose. But second off, I don't know. My mom was just, I always... Some. I've just always yeah. been super connected with her, and she's always been super. I mean, my dad was always great to me too, but yeah. there's just something about you know your mom and taking care of her, and yeah. it's like that's just someone who who I love. So how many siblings do you have? Just two. So I've got older sister, younger older brother. Sister, younger brother. Okay, because the other day I went home and my little sister was yelling at my mom. Yeah. And they like there was something that I can't remember like something where they like hit a sheet or whatever. Yeah. And my mom was like, "None of you will get in trouble. I just want to know who did it. Like, yeah. there's no consequence." And they wouldn't admit it. Really? So I was talking to them. I was like, "Listen, like, you gotta <laughs> have trust. Like, if you like, you're not winning this battle. Yeah. Like, even if you lie, you're not winning." I was like, "Just tell the truth, because you build that trust with mom. When you get to middle school, when you get to high school, it's just gonna be so much easier for you." Right. And I say this inspiring thing to her. Starts hitting me with a slinky. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you want to you wanna get physical? And when she gets mad, she gets really physical. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's go fight. Let's go, like, wrestle. Let's get it out. Yeah. So then we start wrestling and everything and just, like, messing around. And then she finally starts laughing after. Yeah. But it was funny because I pushed her. And then she pushes me back. And, like, it actually made me step back a couple because I forgot, like, they're yeah. stronger and older now. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we might have to go a little bit harder. <laughs> get them down, do the little spit thing where they're like, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah. That's a good big brother right there. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. I love it. Who, uh, who's your favorite basketball player? Favorite basketball player. Uh, given the circumstances, John Morant's not doing the greatest right now. <laughs> He's having a terrible go of it. <laughs> uh, but Damian Lillard and then Gary Payton Jr. Yeah. Gary Payton Jr. just does his role, clamped up defense. And then Damian Lillard, obviously, like, small town, like, he went to Weber State. Yeah. He's an absolute hooper. Yeah, moment. Damian Lillard's a dog. What yeah. about you? Favorite? Oh, oh, go football and basketball. 
Favorite basketball player? Uh, actually, Lillard's up there. Lillard, yeah. I like Lillard. Uh, my boy Nico Mannion's always my go-to. I'm always cheering for oh, him. Oh, yeah. You know? He's a good dude. Yeah, it's cool. One of my friends is now one of my favorite professional basketball players. Yeah, but, uh, it's the flex. Yeah, it is. Um, favorite football player? I uh, I really like um, Tyron Matthew. Okay. And and I feel like I'm copying because I had Micah, Ar- Micah Harper on here. Uh-huh. He said the same thing. And so when he said that, I was like, do you watch, like, the highlights? Because, like, before, like, practice or a game or, like, whenever I need to, like, get myself in the mode, yeah. I'm watching Honey Badger highlights. Like, <laughs> it, just the way he That's plays the up. game is, like, who I try to play like. Exactly. And so he's, I, I love watching him. He's exciting. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I do have to ask you, too, because I remember, so when you were on your mission, you made that video of your pops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I got, you say he's a hooper. Hmm. One-on-one, who's winning? I, he had so he had back surgery and his Achilles. Yeah. So I'm cooking him now, and like okay. I think I beat him for the first time when I was like a junior in high yeah. school. But the problem is, is if he hits one or two, he has this way of self talking him up so much, to oh, yeah? thinking that he's back in his prime, <laughs> that he's not gonna miss a single shot. And he uh, shoots like a little bit behind his head. Like yeah. You know how the old guys do. Yeah, yeah. So you can't block it. So he was just a walking bucket, and then. And now he lives through his videos. Oh, yeah. That's how he beats me. Yeah. Is where I'll make a play. So, like, on my mission, I sent him a video. I jumped over a dude and dunked it. Yeah. He sends me a video back. And when I jumped over, I put my hand on the dude. Yeah. And he said, look, Trey, no hands. And sent a video of him doing the same dunk. Oh, man. But not touching the dude. Yeah. I was like, okay. You live through your videos. You live through your videos. I'm going to still build my legacy. I'm going to get there. That's funny. Yeah. A couple more questions just because I'm interested. Uh, what feels better, dunking on someone or hitting, like, dropping their ankles? You know, you, you drop, break the ankles, step back, three ball. Ooh, dunking on someone just yeah. feels so good because it's like, we were talking about, did you see the new Creed movie? Oh, yeah. I, I'm it, a huge Creed fan oh, now. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I watch one of those movies, I'm like, yo, I could do this. I could really make it in this boxing oh, yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here. Shadow boxing. Yeah. <laughs> you get out the movie theater. You start, like, slamming, you know. <laughs> oh, you just feel like you can do anything. Oh, yeah. So, um, shoot, now I totally forgot what we were talking about. Uh, oh, st- step oh, back or dunk Step back, something. dunk it on someone. And we were saying, like, to knock someone out. Just that physical, just punching right through and knocking the light out of a man. Yeah. I feel like that's the equivalent of dunking on someone in basketball. You just take or their like soul. just body contact and just boom, just dunk it. All, you just take all their pride away. Exactly. Just, yeah. Like you can't, like in the ankle thing, you can kind of like always step, you push. But like yeah. when you get dunked on, it's like. It's that's mono mono exactly. right there. What would you rather have? Uh, I would, I mean, I'm the type of guy where I'm, I want to dunk on someone. Exactly. I want to get nasty. You, like know you what I'm just flex after that. Oh you yeah, can, you own it, bro. I was flexing on people in high school, and I was just layups. Like, <laughs> have you I ever dunk on someone? Uh, I, like I have play. like not on not in high school. I have since then. Me okay. and my buddies at Utah State were playing, and, and Cooper Lega got dunked on. Just for anybody Shouting that out, Shout yeah. Out Cooper and, and Breaker Mendenhall, Coach Mendenhall from BYU. Oh really? His son was playing with us. Put one on his head too. So just had to let him know. Just had to let him know, man. Um, but here's my question: I Ask everybody. And uh, I love hearing the answer. So what's something that most people don't know about you or wouldn't expect from you? Um, I'd say that, like, anti-socialness is, like, a huge thing. That surprised me. Yeah, because, like, a lot of people would be like, oh, you're in the Marriott Center in front of 20,000 people. Like, yeah, like, I'll go and do, like, speaking events to kids and everything. And, like, I'm really social and everything. Yeah. But, like, that just, like, really deep down, like, exhausts me. Yeah. And, like, when I get home, I'm just tired. Right. Like when people are like, oh, let's go to a party. Like the other day, this one, my friend was like, oh, let's go to this mission call opening. And I went and I literally had like a panic attack. Like, yeah. Like, it took me like two days to like get my like social battery back up. So I just say that's just one thing that like, you know, a lot of like there's this thing. Did you watch the Netflix documentary with Jonah Hill? What's it called? It's called like Stutz or whatever. Uh-uh, I didn't watch that one. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. But, like he talks about this whole like snapshot illusion where people like view like their life as like a picture, yeah. But they don't incorporate like the reality into it, right? And, like obviously with like social media and everything, like I'll post a picture, it looks like I'm having the greatest time, right? But like in reality, you know, I'm struggling socially, yeah. I'm tired from all those like things of me going out and talking to people. I'll put on like a smiley face, and I love connecting with people one on one, right? And like find like seeing that light in them, but like 
personally that just like anti-socialness is just like a i don't know see i think that's what surprised me is one-on-one you're so like like you said you love connecting to people and you do such a good job of like making people feel loved like and i'm most of that comes from uh my brother like you you trained my brother on his mission and he has nothing but good things to say about you right he's like dude was just like the hardest working dude always made everybody like feel good like um and and also like you said the 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 look the persona you put out like yeah. you're all you have the biggest smile right yeah. so everybody always sees that you post on instagram biggest smile your byu picture like everything right and so yeah. it's like yeah this big smile but it's uh it, it surprised me when you said you have that yeah. uh social kind of uh mm-hmm. you don't have a, a very high social battery yeah. so but i think it's cool and i think it makes a lot of sense now knowing the background um yeah. and why you have uh, everything you have and why you do the things you do um with your business and all that so that's super cool but, dude, it was super fun getting to know you. Oh, I'm super you excited to put this out there. I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy this. Um, I know there's a lot of younger. I have a lot of people come up to me and, like, hey, like, my kids watch your podcast. And so I think this will be really good for a lot of those younger dudes who who look up to you and, and really who just want to be happy in life. So That's cool. And shout out to you for doing this and just, like, making a platform for people to, like, get their message out there. Dude, I appreciate Respect. it. Sweet.